should the Browns draft? I get asked that question all the time on Twitter, YouTube, wherever I am on the internet. People tend to ask me, who should the Browns draft? What do you think about this prospect? What do you think about that prospect? So I know we like film breakdowns on this channel. So what I thought you guys would enjoy is a new series called Why the Browns Should Draft You Whoever Player is going to be in the film breakdown um, so that we can get a better look at some of these prospects and really, you know, see if these guys are fits or, or misses. So I'm going to jump into the back cave to look at the film. But before I do that, I want to make sure you guys hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and ding that notification notification bell so you could be notified so you don't miss anything a lot of really really great off-season content coming to fill your off-season football appetite um, so make sure you're subscribed make sure you're notified and make sure you click that uh, notification bell as well also I want to make sure I gave a shout out to the dog check tier patreon members and as always I start with Michael Matik, Rob Ferron, Kyle Stouffer, Lukey from Munich, Dave Roth, J Guy 101, Musty Taco, Joe Bobby, Keith Gurkak, Brad Calbo, Daylon W, James McGinty, Arenda Hall, Rex Kaufman, Chad Gimme, David Molinado, Andrew Sadejo, Dylan Hill, Josh Bendor, Eric Green, Jaleel Salim Jr., Martha Krusna, Mark M., TJ Showman, Stuart Moore, Bobo Regretti, Anthony O., David Arndt, Robert Jermaine Jr., Dave Mike May, John Cummings, Yo Yo, Fight 3074, Andrew Hirsch, Hundo Magnifico, Paul Wilcox, Curtis Bayer, Batman, Rush Shareer, Barack Kumar, John Alver, Beerman 069, Massa Yua, Buds of Roland, James Nemo, Mac House, Reeve Hertz, Philip Wilcoxon, Marie Vivert, CK, Keith Anderson, Sean Barron, Gakus Pizzano, Dom Gazzulo, Nick Nasty, Ian Whitaker, Colin 2 and 6, Anthony Latham, Christian, Matt Bond, Dave Strong, Michael Stone, So Train, Charles Work, Billy, Michael Holden, Acton, Moose Gentry, Austin Z, Mark Burnett the second, Andre Griffin, Otis Wolf, IT Rex, Greg Ehlers, Austin Bolin, Jesus. Serrano, Chris Phones, Picktown Brown Backers, Matt Lloyd, Mark Khan, Max Al Dojo, and Water Bear Marketing. Again, guys, thank you so much for the support. Whether you subscribe, whether you hit the notification bell, whether you are a Patreon member, whatever you give to this channel, I appreciate it, even if it's just your attention for 10 to 15 minutes every once in a while. So again, guys, thank you so much for the support. Now, Let's talk about Jeremiah Uwusu Kormai, one of my favorite linebackers in this draft class. We are back here again, back in the back cave for the first time since the season has ended. And no, we're not looking at Cleveland Browns footage, but we're looking at film for somebody you would hope would become a future Cleveland Brown now. A lot of the issues with the Cleveland Browns are all along every level of the defense, right? The defensive line underperformed. The linebackers were fine, um, and the back end really struggled in coverage, especially against teams with deep wide receiver sets like the Chiefs or the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Browns just didn't have enough defensive backs to go after it. Unfortunately, this year, there's really not a great defensive back prospect yes there's Patrick Sertan who's a good defensive back prospect but there's really not a great one this year or not so many great defensive back prospects that you can get one where the Browns are picking but there are a handful of pretty good linebackers in this draft class and some linebackers who could be available at 26 or in, in the range where the Browns would want to trade up Jeremiah Uwasu Koromaya is the guy that I would like the most. I think he's the most versatile. He reminds me of some very versatile coverage, hybrid safety linebacker type players that I've seen be successful in the NFL. So what we're going to do today is go through his film at Clemson. Well, not at Clemson. I'm sorry versus Clemson and really talk about some of the things that really jump off the page with Joker um, when you watch him on film, especially this game. This is a very good game for him. And the first thing is this play. And this, I'm just going to warn you guys right now, this might be one of my favorite plays of all time. You see he's walking around here pre-snap, right? What's the call? What's the call? Who do I got? It's three bunch set over here. I don't know who I got, who got, who, who, who's switching off this man. Right, he, he's doing all of that stuff, right? You see the quickness that he jumps off the line of scrimmage for, right? He goes to play in the charade, right? The charade right here. Oh, man, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? 
Oh, yeah, now I know what I'm going to do. I'm coming right, right towards the quarterback. So he blitzes. And look how quick he is, right? He gets from point A to B really quick. So fast that this guard that's supposed to pull here, 56, you see this guard who's supposed to pull and kind of stop him, has no shot. There's no way that guy is ever going to get an angle on Joker that that's going to be anything good. Um, look, oh, man, that's a thin guard, by the way. Um, but Joker, he runs past him. And then, look, the ball tips off the hands of the running back into the hands of Jeremiah, who then runs this thing back to a, for a touchdown. This is an amazing play. This is one of my favorite plays I have seen in quite a while. You see, he, he does all the, the, sh the showmanship, hands up, where do I go, where do I go? Crashes down immediately with, with veracity. And then look at this subtle detail here, right? A lot of guys, they get a free run like this. They're going to go straight for that quarterback. But he has his eyes on that ball. He sees ETN about to step out for the pitch. And he's athletic enough to kind of slide and adjust his body to make sure he's there to make that tackle. He's so there that he's squared up to catch that football. And then shake off ETN and score a touchdown. How can you not love that play? That is one of the best plays. Of all of this season that I have seen. Another thing I like about him is his tenacity. I think he has very good. Another thing I like about him is his tenacity. He, he's relentless. You see him get to this tight end. Just kind of sure will powers his way down to ETN. Again, I like to see that. I like to see that tenacity. I like to see that ability to just get in there and fight if you need be. Um, it's really what you want to see from linebackers. Another one here, and this is going to show his coverage ability. He's going to be right here. Um, he, he's pretty much a corner on this play, right? Manned up. That's Amari Rodgers. That's probably Clemson's best receiver, one of the better receivers coming out in this draft. Definitely one of the best route runners coming out in this draft. Um, and Jeremiah, technically a linebacker, going to be covering Amari Rodgers here. And see how he holds up. Makes a great play and enforces a fumble, right? Places how you need to. Let's him come down. Knows he's not going to beat him off technique, but waits for him to cradle and then pop it loose. And that's a real fumble. We're going to see it on the replay. That's a real deal fumble that he forced right there. Again, man, versatile. People talk about Isaiah Simmons as a, as a Swiss Army knife, and that didn't really work out for Arizona because I just don't think they had the pieces around him in order to make him useful. Uh, but this guy is a Swiss Army knife in a real way that's going to be real useful. No, he's not going to pass rush next to Miles. That's not what he's going to do. He's not that versatile, right? He's not going to be an all-three levels guy. But he can play two levels of the defense really well. He can be a linebacker, and he can be um, somebody you can feel real comfortable with having him in coverage. And you see him, great technique. He's not a big guy. He's six foot two fifteen. Um, but there have been linebackers, outside linebackers, that have been successful at that weight. So I don't think that's necessarily um, going to take him out of the running of somebody who could be a good linebacker in the NFL. Another thing that you like to see from Joker um, is his ability in run support. You see, he gets right in the chest of this tight end, releases, and is right where he needs to be to stop this run. Again, he has great first step, great burst, great speed. It's all under control. I really like these things from him. Um, another play here where he kind of fills his gap right here. You see his gap. This is his gap. He fills it. The run play is going towards this gap. You see 56 butt. You see this guy's helmet. That means there's a butt and a butt. There's a hole there. Um, and then one of these two guys are going to have to fill that hole because 19 got ran off of it. So look what he does here. He, you know, recognizes it. He's a smart player. Recognizes it and uses athletic ability to get over there, fill that hole before anything dangerous can happen. And he does. So versatile. He's not just a coverage guy. He's somebody who can help you in the run game. He's somebody who people can legitimately say you can almost put him at strong safety and be fine. Um, another thing I like about him is that with a lot of young linebackers, especially very athletic linebackers, one of the bottlenecks you'll see is that they don't trust what they see. 
and they don't utilize that athletic ability because they're not going off of their instincts or they have bad instincts and they're going off instinct, but they're just in the wrong place. Uh, Mac Wilson is a good example of somebody whose instincts um, aren't the greatest, right? Where he'll jump, shoot a play and just overrun it, not be in control. He does not have this problem. Jeremiah does not have this problem. You see here, he's going to be at the top of your screen, kind of sitting in the slot. Um, his responsibility is to kind of watch this guy's man coverage, but if it's a run, crash down, make a play, or if it's a screen or something, you know, recognize and make a play there. He had a lot of freedom in this defense. And you see here he's kind of sitting, sees that it's going to be a run, recognizes it, and then look at the look at the tenacity. Just throws his whole body. <laughs> look at that. In there. I like that. I like that. Um, another example of him being pretty solid in the slot here. He's going to be matched up with Clemson's slot receiver. Again, this is a tough axe for a linebacker. Most linebackers, you don't really want to see them lined up in the slot a lot. Pittsburgh did this a lot in the NFL where they had their linebackers <laughs> slotted up with uh, slot receivers and it didn't work out for them. But Jeremiah is not um vince williams who they would have out there he's he's very good in coverage um and he's somebody you can live with having out there on a slot receiver even a good one and you see how he covers here now he's going to get caught i think for a penalty on this play i think that's bs but it's good coverage you know hand on the shoulder gets the tip ball they call it a flag on it i don't agree with that flag i think but look at that that's just good coverage quickness i like that um, so another thing that I noticed with Jeremiah, right, is yes, he's fast. Yes, he's quick. Yes, he does have good instincts. But my favorite thing about him is that a lot of the times with fast linebackers, the biggest issue is that they play way, way too fast, so fast that they can't really process what they're doing or that their mechanics, their their fundamentals can't catch up with how fast they're trying to go mentally, which results itself in a ton of missed tackles. One of the biggest examples of this, and I don't want to pick on him, but he just happens to do a lot of the things that you don't want to see out of an athletic linebacker that kind of make you think that he can have you know, it drives you crazy because it makes you think he has so much potential. But these small little things always get in the way, and it's Mac Wilson, right? How many times this year was Mac athletic enough to get to a spot on the field crazy fast, but just wasn't under control enough to make the tackle? Jacob Phillips did this a couple of times, but he didn't do it as much. Um, him, Jacob Phillips, maybe you keep B.J. Goodson, and then you have Jeremiah out here, Uusu Koromaya out here. I think that's a really good, really athletic linebacking core that can, you know, do what the team has already done well against the outside run. But also, you know, you can have somebody, you can have key in on Lamar on one side to make sure that he doesn't go off on his favorite side of the field. But back to what I was talking about, the one thing I like about Jeremiah is that, yes, he has the speed, and a lot of guys have speed, but does he have the control? Is he fast enough mentally to process the game at the same speed that he's physically able to run it? That's another thing that gets a lot of guys into issues, right, especially at the linebacking position where they're so fast. And at running back, too, it happens, but it's not related. But they're so fast that they can't process how fast they're going or can't process things in front of them as fast as they can run, which bottlenecks them. Yes, he is very athletic. Yes, he's fast. But he processes just as fast, which means that he can utilize this athleticism. Look at this. He's processing. He's pro shoot under control. There we go. You know, holds him up long enough for somebody else to clean up on the tackle. But he's fast. He's athletic. And it looks like he processes at that same level. Now, that can change in the NFL, right? NFL game moves so fast that, you know, you, you never know. But it's one of the most important things. This is a blitz here, right? Get Sun on the blitz. They do like a little fake. He processes that. Knows that he doesn't have a release on the ball. Know that that screen is bogus. That ball is still in his hands. And then attacks. Again, speed is one thing and speed is great. But especially at the linebacking position. 
If you cannot process as fast as you can run, it's pretty much pointless how fast you are. He can process as fast as he can run. He has decent instincts. Sometimes his instincts do foul him. This is a really good tape for him. Uh, his tape against Alabama is not as impressive. His tape against um, other teams is not as impressive. This is his most impressive game of this season. It was against Clemson. It just happened to be one of the better teams he's played all season. So that is the look at Jeremiah Uwasu Koromaya. I've probably said his middle name five different ways. I apologize. Somebody tell me the right way to say his middle name so I don't keep butchering it um, in the comment section down below. But I like him a lot. I think he's a more athletic, more explosive version of somebody like a Telvin Smith. Now, Telvin Smith... Off the field, you don't want to be anything like him. But on the football field, um, you do kind of want to be like Telvin Smith. Now, again, Google Telvin Smith. You don't want to be him off the field. I'm not trying to glorify Telvin Smith and the things that he has been charged of. It's terrible. But just looking for a football comp, Telvin Smith did come to mind as somebody who was a smaller, slim, um, you know, coverage linebacker that can also be decent in other positions as well. Telvin did that really well when Jacksonville's defense was at its peak. Um, this is something that Jeremiah can do, too. They're both similar heights, similar weights. I think that's a very good comp. It's really Really, really good coverage linebacker, athletic guy that in today's NFL, you can get away with having him out there more often because you don't need really heavy linebackers. Yeah, he can gain some weight, but I think he has enough tenacity and enough speed that he can convert to power that he can actually stay at 215 and be fine at linebacker in the NFL and actually hold up quite well. I know a lot of people want to switch him to safety or see things like that. I think he'll be fine as a outside linebacker. Um, and yes, he can do some occasional uh, safety or defensive back play. But I really like Jeremiah Uosu Kormaya. I think he's one of the best defenders in this draft and a defender week draft i do think he's one of the better ones but let me know what you think down in the comment section below but again guys thank you for watching have a great day have a good night